In the course of my consulting career, whether I'm working for individuals, teams, or organizations, credit and blame is really at the heart of all organizational behavior, for better uh, and or for worse. So each of us in our own careers, we try to make sense of issues of credit and blame. What are we really good at? What are our true capabilities? Could we have been a contender? Are we responsible for our own fate? Have we been scapegoated, ganged up upon, and unfairly stereotyped by others? When it comes to workplace relationships, credit and blame is also very important, whether it's between peers, whether it's between bosses and their subordinates, whether it's within teams, whether it's between teams, or whether it's in entire organizations uh, in terms of their cultures. Currently working on a book on this topic with a co-writer, uh, Darren Dahl, who's a reporter for Inc. Magazine. And basically, our basic point that we're making in the book is we're turning around the normal equation of credit and blame being the result of organizational behavior. And we're looking at credit and blame as being the cause of organizational behavior. So there's nothing to credit and blame in the workplace except for credit and blame itself. So in other words, Malcolm Gladwell wrote an article recently about pilots and co-pilots. There are certain cultures in which co-pilots do not feel comfortable speaking up. There's what's known as high power distance uh, in organizational psychology. Geert Hofstede from IBM came up with these cultural dimensions, power distance, uh, uncertainty, uh, ambiguity tolerance, masculinity versus femininity, and he characterizes cultures on these dimensions. High power distance cultures are ones where subordinates do not feel comfortable speaking up to superiors. So this is a situation where the co-pilot might realize perhaps the captain is playing with his laptop or something like that and they've, they've overshot the airport. But because of the dynamics of credit and blame in that particular minuscule cockpit workplace, the co-pilot is not going to speak up. So that's a case where credit and blame uh, is impacting what actually happens. There's a very famous story about Werner von Braun, who was the head of the US space program in the 60s. There was one day when a Trident rocket blew up at launch, and they weren't exactly sure what had happened. An engineer came into von Braun's office and said to him, I screwed up a circuit board, and that's why the rocket blew up. The next day, the engineer came into work fully expecting to be fired for his mistake, and instead found a bottle of champagne from Von Braun on his desk, along with a note that said, thank you very much uh, for confessing your mistake. You saved us months of diagnostic work. Keep up the good work. So that's another example of the tail wagging the dog. That dynamic of credit and blame crediting someone for having taken blame uh, is an example of a situation where people will speak up, where they will make errors known.